This is the last video in the Nova section before your final challenge, face rigging. In this video, we'll go over some important rigging techniques. We'll fix the problems caused by preserve volume, and we'll even talk about basic IK-FK switching. We'll also go over some theory, such as quaternions and Eulers. This may be a bit difficult at this stage, so it's okay not to understand it fully. The goal is to show you some basics, and we'll keep digging deeper at the intermediate level. First, let us fix the issues that we got from enabling the Preserve Volume option. As a reminder, we enabled the Preserve Volume option for the armature modifier on the main body, and we did so to fix the deformations in the arm. Without Preserve Volume, it looks like this. With Preserve Volume, it's much nicer. But because of Preserve Volume, we get bulging in certain parts of the rig. I think it's worst here. This is with and without preserve volume. This can be fixed. It's a slightly advanced technique, but if you just follow the steps, you can do it. Go to your modifiers, click add modifier, deform, armature. So we are adding one more armature modifier and the object will be our rig, the armature object. So the first armature modifier has the preserve volume option and the second does not have it. The mesh became very distorted. That is because the armature modifiers are added on top of each other. So any offset of the bones produces double deformations. That's okay. The armature modifier has a vertex group option and that controls which part of the mesh will be deformed by this armature modifier. So we can use this to make only certain parts be controlled by the first modifier, which has preserve volume, and other parts will be controlled by the second modifier without preserve volume. Let's go to data, create a new vertex group, call it preserve or something like that. Go to edit mode for the main body mesh, select all vertices, set weight to one and click assign. Now we have all vertices assigned to this vertex group. Go to object mode, back to modifiers and set this vertex group for both armature modifiers. Then on the second armature modifier, enable this button, which means inverse. So now the first armature modifier controls all vertices through this vertex group. And the second armature modifier controls the inverse of that group, which currently means that it doesn't control anything. So we are kind of back to square one, but that will change right away. Go to your vertex groups, select the rig, shift select the body, Go to weight paint mode. And now the preserve vertex group is enabled. If it's not, just click on it and it will become enabled. Now with our usual weight paint settings, make the brush a little bit smaller with F and control click in the bulging area. And it will start to look better. Also control click here. I'm also shift clicking to smooth the weights. And that's it, it's fixed. If you still don't understand why it works and you're curious, when we control click to lessen the effect of this vertex group, these weights are subtracted from the first armature modifier. And because the second armature modifier has the inverse of that group, they are automatically assigned to the second armature modifier. So the vertices that have full red weights are controlled by this modifier. And so preserve volume is applied to them. And the parts of the mesh with less weights are controlled by this modifier, which doesn't have preserve volume. And here is another modifier that you're going to love. Select your mesh, go to add modifier, deform, and choose smooth corrective. And when it comes to rigging, I call this the magic modifier because you just apply it and notice how everything just becomes better. The problem with this and also with the preserve volume is that these are Blender effects, so they are not exportable. But if you just work in Blender, they are absolutely awesome. And just one more quick note, if you have a subdivision modifier, make sure it is at the bottom of the stack. In recent versions of Blender, you can even pin this modifier so that it's always at the bottom. But that was just a note, I'm going to delete subdivision here. Now let's talk about IK a bit. 
We have the legs exclusively in IK and the arms exclusively in FK. If you want to make your arms IK, you could go to edit mode and let's enable in front. Select this point, press E, Y to extrude the IK target. Alt P, clear parent. Go to pose mode, select the new target, shift select the lower arm, control shift C, inverse kinematics, set chain length to two. We can also create a pole. Same as for the leg. I should also parent these new bones to the root bone. And now we have an IK mechanism for the arm. That should be easy for you by now. And the cool thing is, if I want to switch from IK to FK, I can just disable the IK modifier, which I can do by disabling the I icon, or I can set influence to zero. And now this arm is usable in FK mode. So this is the easiest IK-FK switching mechanism. However, we cannot do this for the leg, for example, because if I set influence to zero here, it will kind of work, but we have these constraints on the foot and toe, and they make the behavior of the foot and toe a little bit weird in FK mode. And that is why in level three intermediate rigging, we are going to create proper IK-FK switching. So I'm going to enable my IK leg again. And I'll actually delete all of these IK bones for the arm and delete the IK modifier. It was just a quick demo to show you the easiest way to have both IK and FK, even if it's not a perfect way. Here is something else that gets quite advanced, but I want to point it out at this stage. I'll select my forearm and go to item. And you'll see that my rotation is defined by W, X, Y, Z, and below it, the mode is quaternion. If I click on this, we have quaternion and a couple of Euler variations and even axis angle. Axis angle, you can pretty much ignore for now, but quaternion and Euler's are important. We won't go into the technical details for now. What you need to know is that Euler is easier to understand. I'll switch it, and now we only have X, Y, and Z axis, which makes this very easy to comprehend. If I tweak the X axis, the lower arm will bend. Y will twist and Z will go up and down, which are not realistic actions, so you can leave them for cartoony effects, but you could also lock Y and Z, and so my arm will now only be able to rotate on its natural axis. So that is another advantage of using Euler's. The disadvantage of Euler's is that they are susceptible to something called gimbal lock. Keeping it very light and simple, gimbal lock means that at certain extreme poses, your rig may start behaving unpredictably and not animate the way you expect it to animate. That is why Blender sets the rotation mode to quaternion by default, because it is harder to break. However, the main bones that actually can become gimbal locked are the ones that have a lot of freedom of rotation. And in our rig, that is mainly the upper arm. So you can select all bones, deselect the upper arm controls, shift and click on this bone, for example, set it to XYZ Euler, right click and choose copy to select it. And now all of our bones will be switched to Euler. Euler has different orders of the XYZ axis, and that can help us even more to really prevent gimbal lock. But for now, we'll just keep everything to XYZ Euler. It should be fine in most cases. And with that, you're just one step away from completing the novice level. In the final video, you'll be doing face rigging with a little help from me. It's going to be fun.